All right, peace to the 12. This lesson is going to be on a myriad of topics, you know. It's going to be on the Bible, obviously. But also, the very popular show known as Dragon Ball Z. Well, I'm sure most of you brothers grew up with, man. All right? And we're going to, we're going to show you that Jacob and Esau from the Bible are uh, loosely used and based in Dragon Ball Z. And I'll let you know right now that the Saiyans are the Edomites. All right? So this topic I'm really going to focus on today is going to be on the Edomites and the Saiyans and the Namekians and uh, Israel, all right? You know, the planet Namek. But anyway, kick it off with Genesis 25 and 25, all right? It says, And the first came out red all over, like in hairy garment, and they called his name Esau, all right? And I'll go ahead and go down here. Let's get some context. You know, I'm sure most of you know by now, but let's get it anyway. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over, like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now you see that? Red all over like a hairy garment. Now watch this right here. This in Dragon Ball Z is known as what is called Super Saiyan 4. Alright. It's like the peak trans transformation for the Saiyans. Alright. And as you can see, he has red hair all over. You know, like a hairy garment. Alright. He's red in general. You know. You see that? They got the woman. You know, just all these different alliterations of that. See that? You know what's funny? You know what else is funny? That uh, these 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 Saiyans they turn into great apes, all right? And they turn into great apes and they literally get hair all over their body, and they transform into a wild beast, all right? Very similar to the lichen transformation and werewolf and werewolf lore. But uh, you see, they they turn into these things, and they even have this red beast right here. But uh, you know. This wasn't actually in the show, but the point is, look at that. Yeah. You know? You know, so look. <laughs> so the Saiyans are actually Edomites, man. You know? I remember growing up, people used to tell me, uh, you know, brother, the Saiyans are actually us, brother. That's actually not the truth, man. The Saiyans are the Edomites. But we are depicted in this show, you know? We are depicted in this show. Let's start at... Uh, you know, oh, let, so we proved, or we kind of proved that Esau is the, uh, saying, right? So now let's prove that the Namekians are the so-called black, are so-called black, even though they're green. Now let's prove that. All right. You know, this man's hairy all over. Let's get, uh, right here. All right. This is an excerpt from the book known as Ancient and Modern Britons. It was a book that came out in the 1800s, written by a so-called white man. But in this in this excerpt of this page, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna learn something. All right. Uh. Let's start here. This word is given in the Gallic dictionaries as signifying blue, or whatever shade, also green as grass. Now you know we're gonna go down here a little bit. Uh. For Gorm and his woe. Now watch this. Plainly, therefore, a man who is titled Gorm is a woad stained man. Now, although in the Gal in the Gaelic of Scotland, a Negro is known as Duin Dub, a black man. You see that? Watch this. He is known in the Gaelic of Ireland as Dune Gorm, a blue, green, or woad stained man. And while in Scottish Highlands, the adjective, the adjective glass is used to signify both swarthy and green. All right. So you see that green and you also have blue. So that also lets you know who those blue skinned people signify also. But I'm not going to touch on this topic today. I'm only going to focus on the Saiyans and the Namekians and uh, their, uh, syn synon how synonymous they are with the Bible. All right. Specifically two nations. But, uh. See that blue or green, 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 swarthy and green, Negro. All right, now watch this. Let's go to uh, 
Let's go to the word Negro. Actually, uh, wrong, wrong, my bad. Let's go to the word swarthy. Swarthy. So, remember this word. Remember this word. It said, it said what now? It said the word swarthy. Alright. Swarthy right there. Swarthy and green. Now, let's go over here. Back to where I was at. It says, dark colored. Especially of skin. Swarthy. Black person. Black. Refer to black servants. Negro servants. You see that? You see that? Let's see this word bice. Once again, this is swarthy. Now watch this word bice right here. Um, blue bice. Two dark colors used in painting. The word came into English with a sense of blue or green. You see that? Green. You see that? So we've already. So right now we've proven that green man was also used to describe the so-called black man and the uh and, and so is blue but you know need yeah, that's need to hear and you know while I'm at it I will say a shout out to uh Chronicles of Judah you know he he uh helped inspire me to do this lesson you know but uh we're we're going to keep going uh uh bear with me I got a lot it's a lot here man all right a great ape, you know. Where was I going to start with? Uh, bear with me. All right. And it says, "Look at this, Genesis twenty-seven and eleven. This is uh regarding Jacob when uh when his mother wanted him to go get the blessing. All right, watch this. I'll read from the bottom of context. Uh, and thou shalt bring it to thy father, and that he may eat. I'll go ahead and start here. So I'll start at nine, Genesis twenty-seven and nine. Go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two good kids of the goats. And I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau my brother is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man you see that so he didn't really have hair on his body man he didn't have hair on his body you know now watch this uh bear with me watch this right here where was it at um it's a lot. i gotta find it i gotta find it um look at that Look at this right here. Do black men have less body hair than white men? You see that? <laughs> Smooth skin. You know, just just when I was in the world, you know, and I'm sure I'm sure certain brothers have hair on their bodies, you know, but that's due to, uh, you know, intermingling. But uh, it says, do black men have less body than white hair than in than uh white men less body hair? All right. You see that? And these people are asking this question. Yeah, they're less hairy, but not hairless. You see that? This is a question that somebody asked on a little comment board forum. You know. East Asia and Africa generally have less body hair. You see that? Than South Asians and Europeans. You know, smooth man. You know. Let me see if there's anything else here. If there's anything else here. Now, this is a lie. You know, he's talking about evolution and stuff. But I'll use it as a back. Black people generally came from hot places you know and if you come from somewhere hot you don't need hair to keep you warm you see that's that that's their reason of it but we know that it was to distinguish people man you know a, a people when it said two nations are in their womb and esau came out hairy now that goes back to where we were at in the beginning right here came out red all over hair man a hairy man you know like i said when these sayings transform they get hair all over their bodies, man. And they get a beastal state. You know. You see that? You know. So look at that. Now let's get some more stuff, man. You know. Let's get Obadiah. You know. Book of Obadiah. You know. I'll just. You know. The Edomites. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. An ambassador is sent among the heathen. You know. Now I'm going to go down here. 
Now, this is the part I'm going to, all right? The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. This is talking about the Edomites. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Now, you see that word? The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. I'm sure you brothers who watch this show, you know, you know that uh, the Saiyans have this thing known as Saiyan pride, all right? This dude, this dude right here, known as Vegeta, is is pride. All right, you know, he even has a speech that he said right here. You know, there is one thing a Saiyan always keeps: his pride. You see that? So, the Saiyans are a very prideful people, man. You know. So when we go back to Obadiah, when we go back to Obadiah, that's what it means when it says, "The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee." Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rocks. Now watch this. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. You know, that's synonymous with the caveman who is Esau. But also watch this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see where Goku, who's the main character, the Saiyan, landed. Mount Palzu. See Mount Pazu, Dragon Ball Wiki. See that Mount Pazu is the location where Goku is raised by Grandpa Gohan and where the Dragon Ball story begins. You see that? It was inspired by the mountains. The mountains, you know. Then it goes to Sun Wukong, the Chinese deity, you know. Mount Pazu is mostly known for various monsters that populate the area. Such as dinosaurs. But the point is, you see that? Goku landed and was raised in the mountains, man. You know. And if you watch Dragon Ball, you know he ends up leaving those mountains and explores the world. You know, he explores the world. So that's where that so back when Obadiah. So back in Obadiah. That's what it means by or that that or that's why he was raised in the mountains. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, you know. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. That goes back to saying pride. Alright. You know. And, and, and you know. Let's go back. Let's let's actually go back to where I was saying. On the word swarthy. When it meaning green. is synonymous. You know. So the so called negro. Was also used. They used green. To, to synonify that. Or to signify that. Uh, dark colored. Go to that. Uh, green. You know, and then it even has the word blue right here. You see that? Blue. Blue. You know. But anyway. But anyway. I just wanted to show that again. Now let's go back to the Namekians, man. Let's go back to the Namekians. This is Piccolo. Now you would wonder. Why they have Piccolo dressed in this way, man. You see that? <laughs> Why would they have him dressed like this? You know? Why would they have him dressed like that? <laughs> because they're trying to tell you that the green man is a so-called black man. You know? And I and I'll say this too. Let's go ahead let's go ahead and deal with the uh the god of that show. The quote unquote god, alright? Let's find it. Kami. The god of this thing is Kami. You see that? It's this old green man, you know. When we know that green is synonymous with black, so-called dark brown skinned, all right. The green man, you know, he even has a staff. This green old man is the god of the earth. The word kami means god. Let's get that. Let's get that. Uh, let's see where. Let's see where it is. Uh, bear with me. The word kami actually means God. I'm trying to prove that. Did I say that? Yeah, right here. You see that? Kami. A Japanese word meaning superior lord. A title of the gods of Japan also given to governors. The word was chosen by Japanese converts and Protestant missionaries to refer to the Christian God attested in English from 1610. Do you see that? The Christian God. All right. You know, really the the god of the bible you know the christian god 
because that's the God of the Bible anyway, you know. So, and this video is for the Israelites anyway, you know. Because I already know there's going to be some scoffers, but I don't really give a damn. All right. Now, let's, now let's look up some, uh, you know, and, and by the way, I am a smooth man. So we saw the Saiyans had hair all over their bodies. Now let's look at the Namekians. Now let's look at the Namekians. You know, hairless. <laughs> all of them are hairless. You see that? Hairless. You know, and someone can say, well, they're an alien. Well, the Saiyans are so-called aliens. But they have hair. Look at that. Hairless. Smooth. Alright, you see that? But anyway. So that's that that's this is uh I just wanted to make this out this video out for you brothers, man, you know. And I'm sure, you know, even even people in the world, you know, who don't even really adhere to the scriptures when I was growing up, they used to always say that Piccolo was really a black man, you know. You know, why would they say that? Why would they say that? Because he is. Because he is. And let's also deal with where it said the Saiyans are a proud people. Or proud people. You know. Back to that Saiyan pride spirit. Uh, back to that Saiyan pride spirit right here. Um, let's see how the, let's see what the Lord thinks about pride, man. Let's see what the Lord thinks about pride. Uh, let's see. My mouse is dying. Um, see what the Lord thinks about pride. Gotta find it. Here we go. God hates pride. See that? The Most High hates pride. This is Proverbs 8 and 13. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride, and arrogance. And the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. If you brothers know, growing up, watching the show, the Saiyans were what? They were they were evil, they were proud, and very arrogant. You see that? It's James 4 and 6. But he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. You see that? And it's very it's very uh, other other precepts on this, man. Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. You know, and we know the Edomites are a very proud people, proud people, you know, and another, another thing about the Saiyans, you see how they got the blonde hair transforms into that, but then their final form, super, what they call Super Saiyan 4 and Dragon Ball GT is what they, uh, they go back to their hair, they go back to their black hair, but then they get hair all over their bodies, man, they look like this. It's like this man. Alright. <laughs> so what is the creator of this show really telling you? That these are Edomites. Alright. You know. You know. And by the way. Let's, let's see here too. Let's get, let's get Romans. Let's get Romans. Romans 9 and 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Now right, you see that. So the so God hated Esau, you know. And if you watch the show, you know that who they call quote unquote Beerus, who is a god, you know, who they based off of Egypt. But that's beside the point. The god Beerus actually gave the order to destroy. Uh, the planet Vegeta, which was the home world of the Saiyans, you know, it was the home world of the Saiyans, you know, let's get here, Saiyan background, I'm not going to play the audio, but look at that, you see these three people, these are Saiyans, these are three Saiyans, now you see this picture, give this picture a good look, man, you see that, these are Saiyans, and they're terrorizing people. Alright, but now get a good look at that because watch this. Let's go to let's go over here to let me find cavemen. Now look at these three people. Cavemen. Alright, that's Esau. Alright. K 
cave man. And that's why Goku landed in the cave. Or in the mountains. To be Rose. You know. Now watch this. As a matter of fact. Let me get something else. Let me get the Caucasus Mountains. Caucasus Mountain is a mountain range in the intersection of Europe and Asia. Stretching between the, between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. Now obviously... This is the where you get Caucasian from. But, you know, I'll get something else, too, to, to get that. Esau given mount. Bear with me. You know, I'm kind of all over the place, but moving in the spirit. All right, you see that? So Esau, that is Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir. You know, no, I want the, I want the uh, King James version. You see that? And then I gave Isaac, Jacob, and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir to possess it. But Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. You know. So there you go, Mount Seir, man. You know, that's the land of Esau. That's why Goku landed on Mount Pauzu. All right. You know, saying pride. All right. Now, why, you got to ask, why would they do this? Because Job 5 and 6. For thy mouth uttereth, uttereth thine iniquity, and thou chooses the tongue of the crafty. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, and not I. Yeah, thine own lips testify against thee. You know? This show wasn't made by a so-called black person. It was made by a so-called Asian, you know. So-called Asian man, really a so-called Japanese man, you know. But he, he's revealing to you who these people are, man. This, you know. Now let's get Goku. See, Goku's not even a hero also, you know. See, this is a quote from Goku to Android 17. Watch this. This is Goku now. No, see, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm saving the world. The fact is, I go into every conflict for the battle. What's on my mind is beating down the strongest to get stronger. That's how this tournament happened. You know, maybe that's the saying in me. You see, he tell you he's not even a hero, man. You know, and 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 for those who don't know, these Namekians. Create these these orbs known as Dragon Balls, and Dragon Ball, which are which are these things right here, these orange orbs. And what a Dragon Ball basically is, is it allows you to have a wish to repair damages or whatever, bring somebody back to life, etc. But these Dragon Balls are created by Kami, you know, the Green Man, you know, the Green. This man right here, at least the Earth Dragon Balls, was created by this man. Kami, the green man, you know. <laughs> so there you go. You know, even though he's not, even though these Namekians aren't the strongest in this um, show, uh, they created the thing that everyone wants, the Dragon Ball, the wish. Everyone wants the Dragon Balls for what? Power, you know. And these Dragon Balls save everyone throughout the entire show, you know, even though they're not the strongest in the show. You see that? You know. And there's a reason, you know. <laughs> and we already did we already we already proved that green was sometimes used in the sky of a dark brown skinned man. Alright, let me see if I can get that again. Uh bear with me. You see that? Negro is known as Duane Dub, a black man. He is known in the Gallic of Ireland as Duane Gorm, a blue, green, or woad stained man. All right, so I just wanted to prove that. Swarthy and green, all right? I already, already proven, but you see that picture right there? Synonymous with this picture right here, you know? And the Sands were a bad people. They raided. They basically, they basically raped, robbed, and murdered, man. You know, there, there's another picture of those same sands. You know. Now let's see this. Let's look at the let's look at the lineage of sands, man. All right, sands. 
are a race of extraterrestrials, all right? The Sands from Universe 7 are naturally aggressive warrior race who are supposedly striving to be the strongest in the universe, while the Sands from Universe 6 are protectors. But, you know, I'm not dealing with that. The Sands from the show are what? Naturally aggressive warrior race who are supposedly trying to be the strongest, you know? Supremacy. Saiyan supremacy, all right? The Edomites. I don't watch this, man. I, I didn't even know this, you know. The name is a pun, which mean of y Yijin, which means wild man, caveman. You see that wild man? Now let me. You know what? That just lets me get something else. You know, the wild man. I want. Look at this, the wild man. The wild man is a mythical figure that appears in the artwork and literature of medieval Europe. And this wild man is actually Esau, man. You see? The wild man. You know? All these Edomites pop up, man. They got a Jake right here, but you know, you see that? Wild man. You know? But anyway. See that? That wild man goes back to saying, man. <laughs> I didn't even know this, you know, prior to making this video, but which means wild man. But uh, you know, and they're named after vegetables, as you know. Cain, Cain was a uh, Cain and Abel. Cain was the one that had the vegetables, you know. So there's something there too. But uh, you know, that's basically what I wanted. And the and the sayings, you know. They, they they basically conquered, raped, robbed, and murdered, man. You know, that was basically what they did. And they destroyed planets. And they destroyed worlds. And, you know, when it says a new world, you know, in the Bible, when it says the word world, like when it says we look for a new world, a new earth, and, as a new earth and new beginnings, basically a new world means a new nation. A new uh, rulership. New kingdom, basically. You know. Let's see if there's something else I wanted, man. See if there's something else I wanted, you know. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, you know. I'll probably do some more on this. I'll probably make a playlist and call this like Pop Pop Prophecies where it talks into pop culture and it also has to deal with uh, the Bible. I'll probably do a pre, pre I'll probably do a uh, playlist of that. But um you know, and, and and by the way, let me get some more on this, you know. Oh, and let's see how Job would describe these Esau, these Edomites, all right? Should have done that a long time ago. But look. This is Job chapter 30. But now they that are younger than I have me in derision. Whose fathers I would have disdained to have set with the dogs of my flock. Alright. Now some people would say. See Job is talking about how these are the Israelites. And Job, they, people would think that Job is an Edomite. No. Job is an Israelite obviously. But watch this. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to Exodus real fast. Uh, right here Exodus 4 and 22 and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh thus saith the Lord Israel is my is my son even my firstborn all right you see that so that right there Israel is the firstborn son of the most high Yahweh but uh so when Job says they that are younger as he's speaking about the Edomites you know, what and it says, where to might the strength of their hands profit me, in whom old age was perished? You know, for want and famine, they were solitary, fleeing into the wilderness in former time, desolate and waste. See, the sands were very primal people in there prior to meeting who they call Frieza. You know, and you know, and I'll say this too: Frieza's part of a race. Known as the Frost Demons. Matter of fact, let me get that. See, this is just stuff. It's more stuff is coming into my mind. Frost Demons. Alright. These are Frost Demons. Under Frieza. You see this man, Frieza. He's the one that these Saiyans ended up working for. Now, it's funny that they use this word demon. 
Because all a demon is, is an angel on the left hand side, man. You know? A demon is an angel on the left hand side. As a matter of fact, let me get that real quick. KJV version. Let me get that. Alright, bear with me. Psalm 78 and 49. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. See, evil angels will sent to the Egyptians, but, uh, you know, in this context. But these evil angels are demons, man. That's what a demon is, is an evil angel, alright? So, so these so-called frost demons, these frost demons are really uh, just angels, man, on the left-hand side. And Beerus, the, the god of destruction, so-called, sent Frieza, you know, to deal with the Saiyans. You know, so Frieza would be an angel in that situation. But anyway, an evil angel, a demon. That's why his race is known as frost demons. Uh, you know, and this and, and you know, it doesn't end well for for Esau either. You know, let me, let me get to verse eighteen. Uh, Obadiah one and eighteen, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. All right. You know, and as you know, the planet Vegeta, the homeland of the Saiyans, was destroyed. And all the Saiyans were pretty much wiped out. You know. By who? Frieza, the evil angel, the frost demon. Alright. You know. But if y'all want to read a description of, uh... Uh... The Edomites... Read Job chapter 30. He describes them. You know. And another thing. Another thing while I'm at it. Uh, Esau sold his birthright. To Jacob. For some food man. For some food. And uh. Let me get that. Alright. Two brothers were soon shown. Alright. Esau returned home one day from the field quite exhausted and seeing Jacob with a dish of lentils, still a favorite dish in Syria, he asked with a passionate eagerness for some to eat. You know, so he was really excited about eating. You know, the Saiyans eat a lot, man. You know. But anyway, Jacob made him, his brother hunger to get him to sell his birthright. You know. The birthright consisted afterwards in a double portion of their father's inheritance. But anyway. You know, Jacob knew this and it led him to anticipate the purposes of God. Esau also knew it, but attached no value to it. So Esau didn't value it, man. You know. Which, because they were not of ma material, but of a spiritual nature, he had no particular value in his estimation. You know. So he, so he didn't care. About his birthright, man. He didn't care about, you know, the the uh, the things to come. He was about the now, the food. He just wanted the food. And you know the Sands have a crazy appetite. Let's, let's see if I can get that on. Uh, see if I can get that real quick, you know. I'm going to deal with the Namekians in a minute on their lineage. In the show, you know, matter of fact, I was just get Goku. You know, see if it talks about Goku eating a lot. Um, personality. Uh, bear with me. Um, let 
Boma told Goku dinner was ready, instantly waking him up. Like most Saiyans, Goku loves combat, you know, and the challenge. But let's see that dinner was ready. He's crazy about dinner, you know. You you brothers know if you've seen the show that they eat a lot, you know. Let me matter of fact, let me just type in something real quick. Eating a lot. Let me just get that real quick. Matter of fact. Look at that. Eating all that, man. You know? There might have been some lentils in that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you see all of that. That's Goku eating a lot. But anyway, man. Uh, let me go ahead and deal with one last thing. So, the Edomites are the Saiyans. And we're going we're gonna to get to the Namekians real quick before I close this out. Before I close this out. Let's get to the Mechian side. Um, uh, one second. That's the saying. Right here. All right. And then the Mechians. All right. Commonly known as Namics, or race from Namek, right? Including green skin, green skin, all right. You know they used to call these people demons. You know but that was a lie. You know they went to Earth. You know, approximately 300 years prior to the beginning of the Dragon Ball series, the earliest Namekians encountered on Earth, King Piccolo and his sons, though not counting Kami, were evil, destructive, and caused chaos throughout the Earth. <laughs> you know, so that would be equivalent to the two, what, what, what is known in the scriptures as the two-thirds, you know, wreaking havoc. But anyway, that's, that's beside the point. You also learn that Piccolo has a kid, or... King Piccolo has another son who is also named Piccolo. That is the that is uh the the, the quote unquote good guy, man. Alright. Let's see here. Let's see here. Ha elderly Demekians have darker green skin, light green skin right here. You know. But elder Demekians have darker green skin and less prominent pink patches. You know. Now, what, now look at this. This is what I wanted to get really. This is Piccolo losing his arm. You know. But the Namekians have this ability. Known as regeneration. Alright. Where they can actually regenerate themselves. Alright. You see that? The Namekians can actually regenerate themselves. Well, let's see if I can get that easier. Special abilities, alright? Enhanced hearing, you know, he that have the ears to hear, you know. Now watch this, regeneration. You see this word? Regeneration. That's, just, that's him doing it. The Mechians are an extremely resilient race, capable of surviving nearly any damage to their anatomy, and able to regrow it instantly, provide at least that their brains are intact and they retain enough key. Alright, you see that? They can regenerate. No. The importance of that. And they can awaken potential, you know. But the, the purpose of that, the purpose of this, I'm just going to stick to this. Is that, uh, regeneration. Now watch. Let's go to the, let's go to the Bible. Because the word regeneration is actually in the Bible. You see that? Let's see here. Uh. I don't know if I saved it or not. One second. Uh, yeah, look, regeneration is actually in the Bible. You see that? Regeneration. Only found in Matthew 19 and 28 and Titus 3 and 5. The word literally means a new birth. You know? 
the restitution of all things. It denotes that change of heart elsewhere spoken of as passing from death to life, becoming a new creature in Mashiach Yahweh who they call Jesus Christ, being born again, a renewal of mind, a resurrection from the dead, a being quickened, you know, being quickened. You know, they use the word quickened by the spirit, you know. spiritual life and you know that the Mechans are spiritual you know but point is they can regenerate and that's their ability and the Mechans ability alright and y'all know that Piccolo had the deep voice he wore the turban you know he was super tall and so forth you know and if you know anything about these the Mechians, they dwelled in tents, man. Or they dwelled in little huts. And they were, you know, a peaceful people. They were, they were plain. They didn't go to war with anybody. And none of that. But, yeah. And the reason that, that uh, Kami even went to Earth was because of a uh, tempest. Like a disaster that was going on in his home world. So he had to become a pilgrim. And go to another uh, place. Matter of fact, let me get the word pilgrim. Before I close out, this will be my. This will probably be the last one. Let's get the word pilgrim. See, the word pilgrim actually means alien, man. Did I spell that wrong? You know, a pilgrim, sojourning, sojourner. Uh, pilgrims uh, it's iconic pilgrimage a stranger dwelling all right see here But anyway, that's what I wanted to get. You know, I've been an alien in a strange land, alright? See the word alien. A foreigner, person born in another country, alright? Those who are strangers generally who own no land. Strangers dealing in another country. Alright. Alien. Alright. But anyway. That's pretty much it on that. I just wanted to make this video. And I have plenty of videos I'm going to do in the future. Concerning pop culture, anime, movies and stuff. Resulting in the Bible. I'll make a playlist on that. But I just hope you brothers got, you know, something out of this. And with that, I'll say peace to the twelve. And uh, all praise to the Most High. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Alright, peace.